In Korea, there's a proverb about the art and practice of humility and about what it takes to follow that path of humility in our life. Now, the Korean proverb states, the more the rice ripens, the lower the head. Now, in Korea, just like in China, there are a lot of proverbs and metaphors that are related to agriculture, and especially when it comes to humility. And sadly, a lot of people in life and also on the spiritual path forget about the art and practice of humility and how humility itself is one of the essential aspects that we all should have in our life. But in this proverb, it's stating that the more we live in life, the more humble we should become. As it says in the proverb, the more the rice ripens, the lower the head. So the more that we should bow our head in life and surrender actually to life. And that is something that we should continually do the older and older that we become. Because when we think about it, right, as we get older, our body begins to deplete and we don't have the energy we had when we are a 20 year old, for example, right? So we have to become more humble in our life naturally. But a lot of people don't actually want to do that. They want to believe that they still have the energy of a 20 year old and maintain their certain way of living as they get older. But nature is not in accord with that type of thinking. And so we have to surrender and submit to the way of nature not in a passive way, but in a deeper understanding that the more we live, the more humble we need to become. And especially in spirituality, right, we need to become more humble as we continue on the path in life, the more we need to surrender, right? And so a lot of people, particularly in the West, when they go to Asia, they will see a lot of older people really prostrate in front of the Buddha or Ramana Maharshi or Shiva or Vishnu or what have you. And a lot of Westerners will think, oh, what's that all about? But it's about the art of humility. It's about cultivating that practice and remaining humble that you don't know everything about life, right? But there were some sages, there are some great teachings that you follow that you need to humble yourself to. And in English, there's a phrase that's very similar to this, right? Which says, still waters run deep. And so that is again about that art of humility. And the more still our mind, actually, the deeper we are, the deeper our life is, right? The more our mind is calm. And so the more humble we are, the more deeper and enriched our life becomes. And so we cannot forget the art of humility in our life. As we continue to get older, the more humble that we have to become. And as sages would say, we need to reconnect with that childlike mind that we once had, but we went through the rigors of life and we became this hardened personality, this hardened ego, which was grappling with life, where we were in conflict with others, where we wanted to control our life. But as this Korean proverb illustrates, is that we need to surrender to life to live our life fully. And the only way to surrender is through humility, to be true humble and to humble ourselves to our life and the situations that we come across in our life. There may be obstacles in our life that sometimes we cannot overcome and so we have to surrender and be humble to the situation so that we can overcome that reaction we have to the obstacle. Not essentially about the obstacle itself but our reaction to the obstacle. Is it the end of the world? No, it's not. And so if you're living a full life, you should become more humble and more humble because you are constantly surrendering to each and every situation and understanding that not all obstacles can be overcome. You just have to surrender and bow to life to live a full and enriched spiritual life. And so the older you become, the lower your head should be, right? You should not become a peacock. This is becoming a trend within particularly the spiritual path where people will follow the spiritual path and they will think that they're attaining certain powers or certain wisdom or they know more than someone else. And then they become what Alan Watts described as peacock consciousness. You attain peacock consciousness and you forget your humility. I see other spiritual teachers who have not surrendered, who aren't humble, and they have an opinion on everything. And they think they are greater than others, or they think they are in some elevated position as a teacher, and they forgot what got themselves there in the first place, which was surrender and humility itself. So you can never forget that.
And it is a tricky situation because power always corrupts when we think we have power or power over others. And so we need to surrender to each and every situation and have that humility to see life as it is, not as according to how we want it to be. And so you need to be careful if you are being consumed by peacock consciousness where you think you know more than others or you're stronger than others. Leave that for people who are in competition, right? When you're on the spiritual path, you aren't in competition. And I see this a lot online, particularly where people will get into debates or they will speak to someone as if they are better than them. And that means that they are still in competition. They haven't lowered their head. They are not lowering their head as they continue on their journey in life. And ironically, the more humble you become, the more spiritual energy you actually attain. And in Taoism, they often speak about how water seeks the lowest places, right? But is paradoxically the most powerful force in nature. And so that's the essence of the spiritual path. The more humble we become, the more the Tao can use us. Or in Vedic terms, the more Brahman can use us, the ultimate reality can use us. And so that is the essence of our spiritual path. We need to continually be humble, to surrender to life, and only then can we become an aperture for the whole universe to use us as it sees fit. Shanti, shanti, shanti. (laughs) 